In this video, we're going to use the Bornhetter Ferguson method to predict the ultimate claims and how much to reserve for each accident year. To really understand this video, it's probably best to watch the video on the chain ladder method first, because in that video, I explained the claims triangle and what I'm doing with it. Okay, so in this method, I'm using exactly the same data. So hopefully you can see on the right, I've got that claims triangle, which is the same as the one I used in the chain ladder method. But this time we're going to use the Bornhetter Ferguson method to predict how much to reserve. And it starts off in exactly the same way. So if you come down the bottom here, you can see, again, I've got these link ratios. And they just tell us the factor by which the number of claims increases by from year to year. Underneath the link ratios, I've got a new row, which is the cumulative link ratios. And it's essentially just the product of the link ratios. So let's have a look at a specific number, just to make sense of that. I've highlighted 2.12. So what that means is, um, I'll tell you where this number's come from. This number is a product of all of the link ratios. So this number, 2.12, it tells us the factor by which the number of claims increases by to hit the ultimate claims after 10 years. For example, in 2024, in the first year, so in 2024, for all the accidents that occurred, people made £5,500 worth of claims. If I just multiply that number by the cumulative link ratio, 2.12, I can, I can ascertain immediately the ultimate number of claims, or expected ultimate number of claims, after 10 years. Let's have a look at one more. If I just quickly go to the right of that, you can see I've got a new cumulative link ratio, which is 1.42. That's a product of all of these link ratios. Oh, crikey. All of these link ratios. So from development year one and then all subsequent years. And again, what that 1.42 is telling us is if you know the number of claims in development year one, multiply it by 1.42 and you can work out the expected ultimate claims. For example, in 2023, we know, okay, right, after the first year, the claims have developed a little bit, a few people have made some more claims. We've now got £8,050 worth of claims. If I want to work out the total number of claims for all the accidents that occurred in 2023, I could multiply 8,050 by 1.42. So that's what the cumulative link ratios are. Now, in the Bornhutter method, or the Bornhutter Ferguson method, I should say, I'm just going to call it the BF method from now on, we don't actually do that. We don't multiply by the cumulative link ratios. Instead, we use the cumulative link ratios to find the fraction of the expected ultimate claims that's not yet been paid. Again, I'm going to ask you to look at 2024. So in 2024, for all the claims that happened, uh, for all the incidents that occurred in 2024, um, immediately in that year, £5,500 worth of claims is have been made. Using a cumulative link ratio, which is 2.12, we do a small calculation and underneath that number, you can see we've got 0 0.52. That's the fraction of the expected ultimate claims that's not yet paid. So we think that of the total number of claims for these incidents in 2024, just over half of them have not yet been paid. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, let's have a look at one more example. If I quickly come up to 2023. So in 2023, the claims have developed uh, over one year. So now the total number of claims is 8,050. If I come down to the bottom row, see I've got 0 0.29. That means that of 
all of the incidents that occurred in 2023, we believe that 0.29 of them have not yet been claimed for. So we've got well over half of all of those incidents have now been claimed for, um, but we reckon still 0.29 are yet to uh, yet to sort of be settled. And we're going to use these fraction the fraction unpaid numbers to figure out how much to reserve. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So how do we do this? Well, if you come to the end of the claims triangle, um, it's just a couple of calculations, and we're there. All right. Just bear with me a moment. Let's try and squeeze this on the screen. Okay. Right, okay, so if you have a look again at 2024, we're almost there. Um, just slide across slightly. Yeah, so if we have a look at 2024, uh, I've just highlighted the number here. That's the premium. So um, all in all, in, in revenue, the insurance company, they sold £12,000 worth of... Uh, of insurance products to uh, customers in 2024. Um, and we've got a new number to the right of that ELR, which is the expected loss ratio. Um, it's completely arbitrary for this scenario. I've just set it at 0 0.95. But what, what that number represents is the percentage of the premium we believe the insurance company is gonna have to pay to claimants. So of the 12,000 pounds revenue, we believe we're going to have to pay 95% of that uh, in claims. So if we want to work out how much to reserve, we've got an easy way here to work out how much um, is going to be the total claims. The total claims is simply 12,000 times 0.95. That's the total number of claims. And then if we want to work out how much to reserve, we simply multiply that number by the fraction we think is still unpaid. That's the number down the bottom here, 0 0.52. If we multiply these three numbers together, it's gonna to tell us how much to reserve. And I've got that number over here, 6,031. So if we're here in 2025, I believe that for all the accidents that occurred in 2024, we need to set aside £6,031. And that's the same for the other years. Um, to work out the estimated ultimate claims, um, it's then just a, it's actually just a question of adding the reserve amount to how much has already been claimed. So uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a super complicated calculation, that one. So why do this over the chain ladder method? Because um, arguably they're, they're doing the same thing. But actually this does take out a slight susceptibility of the chain ladder method to volatility in the initial year. So if we had a slightly anomalous initial year, say I will keep going back to 2024, but I'm going to do it again. If I go back to 2024, I've got 5,500 there. If something peculiar happened in that year, and maybe we had some slightly, slightly more claims than usual, um, that's gonna in the chain ladder method. If this number's slightly bigger than useful, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna inflate our expected ultimate claims. Because if this number's bigger than useful, we then multiply it by two point one two, and we could end up predicting that our ultimate claims after ten years, is an extremely large number, which may be unrealistic. Or likewise, it could be an anomalous year, and maybe this number, 5,500, is a lot smaller. And we expect that the claims after 10 years are gonna be quite uh, a lot smaller than they actually are. And so the born, the born had, or the BF method, um, takes that volatility out of it because instead of multiplying the, the initial claims by this cumulative link ratio, 
said it uses the expected loss ratio to predict the ultimate claims. And there's information going into this number here, the 0 0.95. And the idea is that should be a bit more accurate and it's not susceptible to the volatility that the chain ladder method is. Uh, and we can still use the information from the chain lad uh, from the claims triangle in this percentage unpaid column. So we're still the data is still informing how we how we're working out this reserve in number. And that's it. Thanks for listening.